looks good all the time. Brothers and sisters, we are gradually winding down the liturgical year. As a matter of fact, this Sunday is going to be the Sunday we will hear this type of reading that has to do with the, the Lord's coming, the day of the Lord. Next Sunday is going to be the last Sunday of the liturgical year, and it's going to be the Christ the King Sunday, using Jesus as our King to wind down the pastoral year before we go into Advent. And today, the word of the Lord that we hear, instead of being frightening, for me, is very encouraging. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to encourage us and to strengthen us and to ask us to continue pushing. The Lord Jesus wants us to continue in our efforts to be who he has created us to be, to be his children, children after his own heart. You may look at the readings and they appear frightening, but just reading between lines and you will hear words of encouragement, words from a loving father for his children. Well, who may be having some questions or who may be, you know, who may be terrified. Remember, that the church teaches us that God created us to know him, to love him, to serve him here on earth very well and to be with him at the end of time in heaven, beholding him face to face and praising him forever in joy. That is the purpose of God, for God, of God creating you and me. He did not create us to live here forever. So no human being, none of us, will live here forever. That is the frightening part of it. Because some of us, maybe including myself, we don't want to think about this fact that one day we're going to live this life and go back to our maker. And sometimes I want to remind myself and remind those who listen to me, I think I've said this here a few times, that in the year 2100, in the year 2100, 80%, if not 90% of those who are here in this church now will no more be here, including myself. <laughs> In the year 2100, 2100, none of us will be here. We would have gone back to our maker. And that's the truth about life. But that's not supposed to frighten us. It's supposed to encourage us and push us on to continue to do the right things to continue to be God's children, to continue to be virtuous. That should spur us on in our struggle and in our efforts to be good because he created us so that at the end of this life, we're going to be with him, with him forever, praising him, just like we heard about the saints in heaven on the All Saints Day who are before the throne of the Lamb, praising him, worshiping him forever and ever and ever. So our life will be useless if at the end of this life we are not with him, because that's the last purpose of his bringing us to this life, to this world. The world is not going to last forever. You're not going to last forever. And if you and I are not going to last forever, the things we have are not going to last forever. That's why Jesus in the gospel talks about the temple that people were, you know, the temple is so beautiful, it's so beautiful. And so he made them understand that this temple that you see, as beautiful as it is, there will come a time when this temple will be destroyed. As beautiful as the world is, there comes a time when you and I are going to leave this world. 
The day of the Lord is coming. Today we're going to go to see him face to face, to meet him and be with him forever. And it's important that we, are not, that we don't get interested in knowing when, because the, the listeners of Jesus Christ, we are asking, asked him, when is this going to happen? When is it happening? None of us knows the time. None of us knows the day. Because we can see people who are 90 something years old, 100 and something years old, and they are still alive. And 50 something years old people, 40 something people, years old people continue to die because their time has come to go back to their maker. So when is not important. The most important thing is what we do right here now. And Jesus continues after telling them, after he said, see that you are not, be he continues to say, see that you are not deceived. Don't allow false prophets, false teachers, false faith and belief to deceive you or lead you astray. Because there are so many false doctrine, doctrines, so many false teachings. There are so many people who believe different things in this world and they want to convince you and I to believe what they believe. They want to make us shift from our faith in God and be begin to believe the things that are opposed or contrary or anti-God. And that is becoming the other of the day. And even some, some places, the, com the, the, the government also gives accent to, accent to these uh, beliefs and uh, makes them laws or legislations or whatever, passes them and all that. But they are anti-God. And Jesus says, do not be deceived. Let nobody, let no false preacher or false brother or false sister or false friend or false parent deceive you or lead you astray. Because my purpose is that at the end of this life, you will be with me. I believe. And nothing can change my faith in him. That's what should be in our hearts all the time. No human being, nothing can change my faith in him. So we are asked to continue doing what is right in the sight of God. And because we do not know the time or the day that he is coming, We should not be caught on our ways. Maybe you have heard the story of three kids who were asked what they think they will be doing if they are told that the Lord is coming to take them, you know, that they're going to die in one hour. One of them said, if I hear that God is going to come and take me in one hour, I will go for confession. I reconcile with God so that when he comes, I will be able to see him face to face. The other child said, okay, if God is coming in the next hour, I will go and stay in the church so that when he comes, he will find me in the church praying. I will be praying. I will go and reconcile with everybody who, has, who I have offended, and I will go to the church and wait for God to come. But the other child said, in the next one, uh, I will be in the soccer field playing soccer. That's the right time I should be playing my soccer. That's my time for soccer game. So I will be in the field playing soccer. And that's the attitude we should have in this life. Doing, being who we should be, wherever we find ourselves. Not waiting for, you know, when the time is near, you know, because nobody knows when. And so St. Paul in the second reading, talking to these Thessalonians, who some people have deceived into believing that the Lord's coming is imminent, it's, it's going to happen today or tomorrow. St. Paul warns them also not to be deceived. Because some of these people said that, you know, they were idle, doing nothing. They were not working. They were not doing any other. They were waiting for the day of the Lord. And I already said, we don't even know when. 
In the 1990s, I remember what happened in Nigeria. People were prophesying that the world will come to an end in the year 2000. I don't know if something like that happened here. That the world will come to an end in the year 2000. And so many people, even where I come from, in some of these Pentecostal denominations, sold, sold all they had, waiting for the day of the Lord in the year 2000. Today is 2022. And the world has not come to an end. And so the Lord urged Jesus not to be idle, to continue to work very hard. You know, St. Paul, using himself as an example, I am, I am pursuing, I am in pursuit, I am, I am aspiring, I am making efforts, I am a pilgrim on this journey, I want to meet God, I want to be in heaven, but I'm still working hard, providing for myself. So he says, imitate us. So it means that we should be living our normal lives, but living our normal lives in virtue. Living our normal lives as good and virtuous children of God. St. Paul says to the Thessalonians, imitate us. Yes, we're going to go meet, with the, meet the Lord, but it doesn't mean we're going to start being idle and then just keep coming to the church and staying from morning to night. Continue the good work you are doing. Continue reaching out to the poor people. Continue spreading the good news. Continue loving people. Continue, you know, putting joy and gladness in the lives and in the hearts of people. Continue doing what you are doing until the day the Lord comes. Don't just fold your hands and say, the Lord is coming, so of what use is my, my efforts, you know, in this life? St. Paul wants all of us not to live that way, but continue to continue living our normal lives. So why should we continue to live our normal lives? Malachi, in the first reading, God speaks to us through him, talking to these people who we are surprised or who we are maybe disappointed that the Bad people we are thriving while the good people we are, you know, going through some temptations and trials. And God, through the mouth of Malachi, reassures them and tells them, do not worry. The time is coming when these wicked and evil people are going to be punished. But those of you who live righteous lives, they're going to be rewarded. So it's so encouraging. All of us. But those of you who fear, who fear my name, there will arise the son of justice with its healing rays. There is a reward for every good deed, every good thing we are doing at this moment. That's so encouraging, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Do not because this world, we come, you know, we're going to leave this world one day, you know, decide to leave it anyhow, but leave it right, because there's a reward for a good life. Especially today, the third, third Sunday of every year that Pope Francis from the year 2016 declared the world there of the poor. It's important also, as we think about the poor, even here in our parish, as rich as this parish is, we still find poor people among us. Those who are, you know, going through a lot of not very easy life. Still talking about some, what St. Paul said to these Thessalonians, he still demanded and expected of us, you and I, to make these people have reason to keep believing in God, to make these people have reason to believe that we are their brothers and their sisters, to make these people have a reason to believe that God loves them, through us. Pope Francis exhorts all of us today to think about the poor. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Lord encourages all of us. He doesn't frighten us today. And don't be frightened, but be encouraged that we are going to be with him at the end of this life. Don't allow anybody to distract you even when we go through persecutions and trials, just like Jesus was talking about, remain the child of God that he has created you to be and keep 
having faith in him. I love singing Jim Reeves' song that says, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. It doesn't mean that when we go to our houses, we're not going to feel at home. But just to live as if this is where it ends, that is where the problem lies. Live as if somewhere that we are looking forward to is our home. And may God give us this grace today. Amen.